Welcome to Biocon's Q1 FY26 earnings briefing. Let me start by saying that Biocon has started FY26 on a positive note, driven by continued gains in its biosimilars and research services, or now what we refer to as CRDMO business, and a steady showing in the generics segment. Now, I must remind you that we had a one-time gain last fiscal from the divestment of our branded formulations India business in Q1 last fiscal. And therefore, on a like-for-like -like basis, we delivered 15% year-on-year growth in our operating revenue in Q1 FY26, which stood at 3,942 crores. R&D investments were rupees 205 crores or 7% of revenues ex Sinji, reflecting continued pipeline investment. Reported EBITDA grew 19% year on year, again on a like for like basis to 829 crores. And profit before tax, excluding the exceptional gain that we had last fiscal on account of the divestment, rose 72% year-on-year to 97 crores. Before I get into segmental and financial details, let me highlight some of the key developments during the quarter. I'm sure all of you knew and do know of the successful completion of a QIP or a Qualified Institutions Placement of 4,500 crores as a part of our strategy to strengthen the group's financial position and reduce our exposure to structured equity investments. This marked our first equity raise at Biocon since our IPO in 2004. The offering was oversubscribed and received strong interest from a diverse mix of global and domestic institutional investors which of course reflects confidence in our long-term strategy and value creation potential. These funds will enable us to increase our stake in Biolocon Biologics by facilitating the exit of structured equity investors, which reinforces our strategic focus on the huge opportunity that Biosimilars offers. Now let me talk about product launches and approvals. We achieved several significant milestones this quarter, starting with the launch of Yesa Philly or our biosimilar Aflibercept in Canada in July, which not only marked our entry into ophthalmology, but it also signified the successful commercialization of our 10th biosimilar globally. And what is also important to mention is that Yesa Philly was the first biosimilar aflibercept that entered the Canadian market. We also achieved another very important regulatory milestone with USMD approval of our biosimilar insulin aspart Kirsty in July. And we have now 12 approved biosimilars. The aspart approval will help us build on a strong foundation that was established by Sendly our long-acting insulin, further reinforcing our leadership in the U.S. insulin market. What is also very important to mention is that Kirsty, or our biosimilar insulin as part, is the first and only interchangeable rapid-acting insulin approved by U.S. FDA. We also saw the approval of our denosumumab biosimilars in both the EU and U.K. markets which really marks our anticipated entry into the bone health segment, which opens a new therapeutic area for our biosimilars business. Let me now touch upon facility expansions and strategic capability building. We continue to invest in expanding and diversifying our global manufacturing footprint to support long-term growth and localization priorities. 
Our injectables manufacturing facility, primarily focused on GLP ones in Bangalore, has been commissioned with commercial supply expected to begin in FY27. The facility will fulfill the generics business portfolio needs across vials, cartridges, prefilled syringes, and drug device combination products. Let me say how impressed I was to visit this facility today and realize that it's a world-class facility with the most advanced features. And this has been obviously built at a significant investment of almost 300 crores. So we need to make sure that we deliver handsomely from this particular facility. And I'm looking forward to making this facility a global success. Um, these investments are also helping us to align our businesses with shifting global policy and supply chain dynamics. And I, in this respect, I would like to talk about the fact that both Biocon and Sinji now have two manufacturing setups in the US where we are advancing manufacturing expansion. We have significantly expanded capacity at our oral dosage, uh, solid dosage facility in Cranberry, New Jersey, to better support the US growth plans of our generics business. Sinji's Bayview Biologics facility will enhance capacity and give direct access to the US biologics CRDMO business or market. And additionally, the facility will also be utilized by Biocon Biologics for select biosimilars for the US market. These sites, I believe, will play a critical role in ensuring supply chain resilience, regulatory proximity, and secure US market access, particularly in our generics and biosimilars portfolios. Let me now get into segment highlights, starting with generics. Revenue from operations in the generic segment was up 6% year on year at Rs. 697 crores. Growth in Q1 was supported by new product launches, including liraglutide in the EU, lenalidomide and dasatinib in the US, and some stronger volumes in key APIs. Segmental EBITDA was absolutely impacted by operationalizing operations costs of our new facilities, which includes our peptide API facility, our expanded fermentation capacity at Visar, and our cranberry facility in the US. And of course, while these costs impact uh, margins in the near term, uh, we believe that these new capacities will deliver strong return on capital as utilization ramps up, especially in GLP ones, especially and the US. Now, I want to emphasize here that we will need to make sure that we focus on a successful launch of all the products that we expect to generate from these new facilities and. It is important for us to get back to healthy EBITDA levels and absorb these operating costs. When it comes to R&D investments, we have invested 70 crores or 10% of segment revenues, primarily directed again towards advancing our GLP-1 portfolio. In India, we obtained approval for liraglutide under the Victoza generic uh, category. Uh, under the Government of India's recently introduced Reliance on Recognized Regulatory Authorities Framework, which recognizes approvals granted by established and well-referenced stringent regulatory authorities in the ICH countries. This marks our first approval in India for its vertically integrated GLP-1 drug product, and we are preparing to launch this product through our commercialization partners. Now coming to biosimilars. Biocon Biologics started FY26 on a strong footing, delivering 18% year-on-year revenue growth to Rs. 2,458 crores, 
driven by a good demand across key markets. EBITDA rose 36% year on year on a like for like basis to rupees 645 crores with a margin of 26%. When it comes to key highlights, I'd like to start with North America, where our oncology portfolio delivered strong performance in the US with both Ogivri and Quilfila each achieving a 27% market share. Yesintech, our biosimilar Ustekinumab, one of the first biosimilars to Janssen's uh, Stellara, has emerged as an early leader in the immunology segment in the US. We are seeing strong adoption at the physician level with increased prescription volumes. Our product has strong formulary coverage across major payers, including CVS, United Health, Express Scripts, and Blue Cross Blue Shield plans. Now, coming to Europe, the company is expanding its footprint and launching new products across the region. Again, in terms of our uh, cancer uh, biosimilars, uh, Ogibri and Ebermi achieved market shares of 21% and 15% respectively on the back of very successful tender wins. Yesintech, our biosimilar uh, Ustekinumab, saw a strong uptake in key European markets across Germany, Spain, Italy, and Portugal. Emerging markets also remained strong where growth was driven by our strategic focus on eight high-impact self-led markets, which reported a notable increase in revenue contribution in Q1 FY26. We executed 12 launches from our commercialized portfolio across the region, and we secured large tenders, including a multi-year contract with, the Malaysia, with Malaysia's Ministry of Health for both recombinant human insulin and insulin glargy. Now coming to our research services business, which is now relabeled as CRDMO, which is basically Sinjin's business. Starting uh, from this uh, financial year, as I said, we have renamed it as CRDMO in order to reflect the expanded nature of its business, which is, in combination, which is a combination of contract research and development and contract manufacturing operations. Sinjin had a positive start with revenues of 875 crores, which reflects 11% year-on-year increase. EBITDA of 224 crores, up 19% year-on-year. And this growth largely came from pilot program, programs transitioning to a long-term contract in discovery services and continued uh, business on account of client trust in Sinjin's scientific and operational excellence. In terms of capacity expansion in manufacturing facilities, Sinjin's new biologics facility in Bengaluru, which is referred to as Unit 3, is now operational. And its Bayview facility in Baltimore remains on track to be commissioned later this year. Now, despite the various macroeconomic uncertainties, Sinjin sees robust demand from large and mid-sized pharma clients and remains on track to deliver its FY26 guidance. Let me now briefly comment on sustainability. During the quarter, we continue to make meaningful strides in our sustainability journey, where Biocon received a gold rating in the 2024 EcoVadis Corporate Sustainability Assessment with an improved score of 77, up from 70 last year. This places us in the top 5% of companies globally and represents our highest sustainability rating to date. Sinjin was recognized by Time Magazine and Statista as one of the world's most sustainable companies 2025 ranking first among Indian pharma and biotech firms and placing it in the top 20 globally within this sector. This recognition underscores our collective commitment to responsible growth, environmental stewardship, and sustainable business practices. So to conclude, I would like to say that all three businesses, 
biosimilars, CRDMO, and genetics are seeing accelerated growth. Each has clear growth drivers and focused leadership working to strengthen fundamentals and improve return ratios. The progress we made on product launches, market share, and customer traction demonstrates that we are winning in the market. I would like to end by saying we need to double down and focus on execution and winning in the market. Until next quarter, I wish you all the best. Thank you.